Hello everybody, chess fans, pro chess league fans, welcome to the highlights from the last week of the regular season of the pro chess league. And the action in this final week did not disappoint unless you were a fan of one of the teams that did not make the playoffs or got relegated or something like that, in which case, yeah, I guess you were disappointed. But the excitement and intensity were there. Um, things kicked off with the Atlantic Division, in which the Montclair Sopranos were chasing the uh, Chess Bras for a spot in the playoffs. They were in fifth place behind the Chess Bras, and it comes down to a match between the two teams in the final round. Um, the Montclair Sopranos were carried in large part all uh, all day long by Nicolas Cheka and Thomas Bartel with both fantastic performance. Here's international master Spinal Tap, um, who scored six out of six on board four. Just doing a little, mate. Boom, boom, boom. And uh, he showed that he could do it in the end game too in the final round against Sean Rodrigue Lemieux, the key addition to the chess bras of late. But here, um, if white plays rook d1 to defend the d4 pawn, black just doubles and takes the isolated pawn. So white goes for some counterplay on g6 and f5 on the e-file. But he calculates it very carefully, does Thomas. Bishop c5, got to deal with that. Now he can take with the king. There's no bishop hanging on e7. Takes back this way. White attacks this f5 pawn. And he gives it. He just gives it. The knight escapes from f5, but in comes the black king. And uh, checkmate is coming either on a1 or on h2 via, via a2. And... Uh, he took that home. Perfect score on the day for Thomas Bartel. Um, yeah, Nik Nikolas Cheka's performance in a way was even more impressive because he was pretty much the lowest rated player on board two. He's up against players like Wesley So, Eduardo Iturizaga, um, you know, like serious, serious top level all-stars, much higher rated than himself. And uh, he scored five and a half out of seven. However, I have no games to show you since he was basically getting like beaten every game and just survived, survived, survived until his opponents blundered. But five and a half out of seven, uh, definitely by performance rating the MVP of the Atlantic Division. And the uh, Montclair Sopranos, with that, with that win there in the last round against the Chess Bros, they not only make the playoffs, but they win the Battle Royale to push themselves into the playoffs. And according to my calculations, if they had one less point in that match, in the Battle Royale, um, the Chess Bras would actually have gotten the playoff spot. All right, uh, top performer on board three was Grandmaster Ilya Nizhnik for the Webster Windmills. And here he does a little tactic. It's not kind of windmill, but uh, it's a little checkmate that you all probably know. Boom, 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 boom. Got to know your classics. And um, yeah, going into the playoffs, the uh, Archbishops maintain first place, but uh, the Montclair Sopranos look pretty hot this week. Uh, onto the Pacific. Uh, and once again, the Minnesota Blizzard overperform in the Battle Royale format compared to the normal 4v4 format. Here is Finn's 0905. Taking advantage of a slight weakening by black here with h6. Not a good move. Slightly weakens the g6 square. What's the impact of that? Well, prepare for impact. Boom. Bishop takes g6. If pawn takes, queen takes, attacks the rook and bishop, and black falls apart. Um, black struggled on, but... Uh, but JB took this one without too much trouble. Um, it's a great game and a candidate for the game of the week. Um, his team, well, he scores six and a half out of seven the second time in a row in a battle royale. And his team takes first place. But surprisingly, they not only take first place in the battle royale, they take first place in the Pacific, leapfrogging the Chengdu Pandas and Dallas Destiny at the same time. Myself and probably a lot of other people had assumed that it was kind of a race for first between the Pandas and the Destiny, but it wasn't. Um, and in particular, it was the Pandas who really struggled finishing something like sixth or seventh place out of eight teams on the day. 
um, not looking like the top team. Here, Xu Xiangyu played the exchange Slav against Conrad Holt, and it looks like Conrad Holt got really, really darn mad about that, because look how he plays this as black. G6 and F5, F4 in the opening, leaves his C6 pawn hanging. He's like, I don't care about niceties like the C5 outpost or the C6 pawn or the pressure on the Sammy open file. Um, yeah, Xu Xiangyu decides to keep the F file closed, and Conrad plays queen h4, kind of suggesting that he might just plop his knight on g3 to open up something near white's king. There was, uh, yeah, I looked at this for a bit. I couldn't even figure out what white's supposed to do about this. I mean, it looks it looks insane from Conrad. I've never seen somebody start an attack like this, but uh, it seemed, but I, I couldn't figure out how to refute it. After e5, he just plays f3, leaving the bishop hanging, but threatening all, f takes g2, followed by checkmate on on. F2, and if pawn to G3, he's got queen takes D4, hitting the bishop on D3 and the pawn on E5. Um, so white plays G4 to cut off his queen, then he just plops his knight on G3 anyway, splat. Um, if if F takes G3, then he's got queen H3 and F2. Um, the rook moved. He force-fed him the knight with queen H2. Got to take it. Boom, boom. Bishop A6. Ugh, crunch. Checkmate's coming. The king tries to flee. Do not run. We are your friends. King sort of gets out for a moment, but now watch him finish this off. Oh, with another crunching move. Queen for the bishop, and the f-pawn comes home. Defended by the bishop on a6. Xu Xiangyu resigns. Conrad Holt, jeez, man, you let out a, like a month's worth of aggression in one 15-minute game. And uh, the destiny, at least, did okay past the pandas to move into second place and they look like a really strong team as well in the pacific um so that kind of wraps things up hard to say what the what the best team in the atlantic or pacific is right now but uh we can we've got some time to debate that um until the playoff matches reveal the truth uh stay tuned for another video with highlights from the eastern and uh, central divisions, as well as check out the Pro Chess League YouTube channel for Pro Chess lessons, sort of longer looks at some of the more interesting um, learning moments from these games.